Okay, a pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon to all of you. My name is Andrew, one of the pastors here in Victory Taft. We are currently on the second part of our series titled Trust Worthy. And in this series, um, we said and mentioned last week that we are learning about God's trustworthiness as seen as how he has kept his covenant with his chosen people. Do you remember that? We talked a little bit about covenant from last week. Okay, so um, hopefully you'll be able to go back to that um, first week if you haven't yet para mas maintindihan natin ano ba yung covenant. Um uh, mahaba kasi yung ano eh, yung introduction kaya hindi na natin ulitin ngayon. Pero uh, we see God's faithfulness to his covenant here in the book of Isaiah. And every time we come and attend the preaching of God's word sa mga services natin, uh, one of our primary hope is that we'll grow more in our relationship with God through studying His Word, okay? Amen. How many of you want to grow more in your relationship with God as you study God's Word? Can I hear an amen for that? Yeah, and praise God. And um, in our church, again, we do this by, by studying scriptures. And just like what we said last um, uh, during the Salt and Light series, this is among our primary books na we are focusing on for this 2021, Madami nating times babasahin tong ano book of Isaiah. For many people, including me, this is one of the books in the Bible that that's quite hard to understand left on our own. Tama ba? Sino sayo nakaka-relate sa akin? 'Di ba? Pag binasa mo yung book of Isaiah, parang medyo challenging siya. Or ako lang ba yung may challenge in reading the book of Isaiah? Yan. So kaya this year our hope is that as we go through Isaiah, we'll have more context and background about it so that every time we go back to that book now and we read it for our quiet times. Yan. Mas ma, hopefully, mas magigets natin siya. And hopefully, mas ma-enrich yung devotion natin. Gusto nyo ba yun? Amen. And just like uh, what I said last week, um, if I were to give an imagery of what this means for us, itong book of Isaiah, sabi kasi ng mga scholars, sobrang rich itong book na ito. There's so much treasure to this book. And I gave this imagery last week. Let's imagine a, a mountain Actually, it's for this week's message. Where there, imagine a mountain where there's so much riches, so much gold, diamond, treasures, pero hindi mo palang fully natatap yung potential nito. But in order to be able to get to those treasures, then we first and foremost have to do the hard work of digging, digging deep in order for us to get those hidden treasures. So similarly, Ganunin tayo sa book of Isaiah. Scholars would say, this is the fifth gospel. There's so much really here in, in this Old Testament letter. Sayang naman kung hindi natin matatap yung true potential niya. And ito, even after we're done in this series, this 2021, we are barely scratching the surface of the richness of this book. Kaya yun yung ginagawa natin. As part of our, what we're doing, we're, we're leading the way as pastors in studying the book of Isaiah. And as we go through this book, in this series, in this 2021, that doesn't mean we've already uncovered entirely the riches and the treasures of this book. We're just leading the way. Uh, our hope is that uh, you will continue to love and study the Word of God even more. Amen? How many of you are, you are excited to study God's Word even further in your devotions? Excited ba kayo doing your quiet time? Are you, are you excited in doing that? Comment naman kayo ng amen in the, in the comment section if you are. Yeah, that's our hope, eh. We, our hope is that you guys will not just, you know, come every service and dun lang kayo mag ng preaching of the word. Pero hopefully through the preaching services, may inspire namin kayo to really dig God's word further for yourselves. Yun yung hope natin. And we believe that's part of what will help establish you to be, um, to be uh, strong in Christ and in God. Amen. Okay, so I just wanted to say that, that that's one of our primary hope as a church, that we will really go deeper in the Word of God as well. And hopefully, na-inspire na rin kayo to really um, dig deep in God's Word. Okay? But ito, more than, this series more than just being a Bible study. Hindi lang to Bible study. Kaya trustworthy yung series natin. Is that, ang hope natin, makikita natin yung relevance itong uh, archaic Old Testament book for our lives. Kasi, the Word of God is timely and timeless. We always believe it's relevant. Relevant for us even up until today. Again, in this series, yung facet ng Isaiah that we're looking at is, uh, our hope is that 
our trust in God will increase more and more. Amen? So that's what we're doing in the seas. Kaya trust worthy. That God alone is um, the one, the one true person in whom we can put our whole and complete trust in. Naniniwala ba kayo dun? Not in anything else that the world has to offer. Not in ourselves. Not in people. Tinan niyo yung mga katabi mo? Katabi niyo sa mga nasa on-site? Mukha bang ka, ano? Pwede niyo pagtiwalaan yung tao? Yes. Pero, yes, to some extent, pero not fully, okay? Yung mga nakikita niyo sa comment section, you can trust them to some extent, but you cannot put your whole trust in them. So, not in people. Not in the things of the world. Yan yung pag-uusapan natin next week. Okay? But in God and God alone. And we see this, how faithful God is because He kept His covenant with His people. How many of you know that, you know, if you have a relationship with someone and this person always does what he says he will do, uh, then consciously or subconsciously, alam mo lang mapagkakatiwalaan mo yung taong yun. Tama ba? Tama ba? EJ and Lovick and sila yung mga nasa onsite, di ba? Di ba? Pag may kailala kayong tao, tapos uh, this person always does what they say, alam mo lang mapagkakatiwalaan mo itong taong to, di ba? So that is what we see with God as well. When He made all of these promises, all of these covenants, He kept them because He is faithful to all of His promises. So one, one personal example of that in my life is my mom. Hi, Ma, if, if you're gonna watch this, after this uh, message, sasabihin ko sa'yo, binanggit kita. Usually, pinapanood niya yun. <laughs> Pag ano, binabanggit ko siya. But one of the reasons um, uh, I trust my mom, kasi alam ko lang, you know, in my whole entire life that I've known her, when she says something, she does it and she fulfills her promises. From, from the little things, like kapag sinabi niya, babayaran niya ako for something I paid in, behalf, in her behalf. Grabe. Ano, she really uh, pays me back, although she doesn't have to naman. And from her making sure that we were able to finish college. Thank you, Ma, for that. And kita, mo, kita ko talaga paano mo kami binuhat, kami magkakapatid. Okay? And whenever she says na magbabakasyon kami, grabe. Thank you, Ma, for that. She is ano, uh, trustworthy in her promises for us. Because of this, because of her track record, my trust in her is secure. Not perfectly, but strong enough. Now, now we, with God, we see that all of His promises, He said in His covenant, He fulfilled. Even in times where in feeling ng tao, all hope is lost already. There never came a time when God would not have been able to fulfill what He said. And in hindsight, when we read the Word of God, we see that very, very clearly. Over thousands of years, not one of His promises ever failed to come to pass. Now, if, gan- if ganito yung track record ni God, imagine yun ta. If ganito yung track record ni God, how many of you know na, man, God is someone we can fully, truly, absolutely trust with our whole lives. That's what we're trying to show in this series as we study the book of Isaiah. Last week, um, I introduced again to us some of the concept of the covenant, covenants of God, and certain promises He made in those covenants. The, the Noe Covenant, the Abrahamic, the Mosaic Covenant, to name a few. Last week in chapter 1 of Isaiah, we, we saw Isaiah giving a prophetic picture, a prophetic word to God's people of how they failed miserably to meet their side of the covenant, specifically the Mosaic Covenant. Last week, we saw how rebellious, stubborn, and disobedient God's people are. That's why the curses of the covenant fell upon them. All the bad things that happen to them are because of their own doing. Diba naalala yun? Break God's law and it will break you. Sino sa'yo nakaka-relate? Diba? Alam naman natin, mali! Nagdi-disobey pa rin tayo kay God. Kaya we face the consequences of our actions. Bato bato sa langit, tamaan? Ako po yun. Yeah. Guilty as charged. And maybe some of you can relate. Pero buti na lang, last week we saw this, despite their failure, despite them being rebellious children of God, Buti na lang faithful pa rin si Lord sa buhay nila. Ang galing lang ng story ng Bible. Ang galing lang nitong theme of God's covenant. Again, covenant is one of the major themes in Scripture. In this series, we will see more and more how God is so faithful to His covenant. Today, we will continue with the book of Isaiah in chapter 2. And here, we see, we see what? God's plan of salvation for the nations. God's plan of salvation for 
for the nations. This is another theme that runs in God's covenant, specifically with Abraham. Ito, God told Abraham, sinabi ni God kay Abraham ito, all the nations of the world will be blessed through you. Here, Isaiah reiterates this promise and gives us a beautiful picture of the nations flowing and flocking towards God. So if you have your Bibles with you, kindly open them with me to Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Let me read that for you. It says here, The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills. And all the nations shall flow to it. Verse 3. And many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Verse 4, He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Last verse, O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let's just pray. Father, thank you, God, for our time together. Thank you, God, for the hearing of your word, the preaching of your word. Bless the preaching of your word. And I pray, Lord, yeah, that in this prophetic picture that Isaiah shows us, shows God's people, Lord God, uh, many, many centuries ago, I pray that um, we will see its relevance, Lord God, even to our time today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say online, amen, amen, and amen. All right. Okay, I say it too. I say it too na po tayo. Um, in fact, for this whole series, we'll be um, looking at certain chapters from Isaiah 1 up to Isaiah chapter 12. Yan, I think. We'll be skipping some kasi ano, masyado talaga ano, mar- marami for us to be able to cover in a short series. So okay, book of Isaiah, hopefully. Um, slowly but surely, we're, we're digging deep to the treasures of this book. So here, here we saw a beautiful picture of what is to come. I say, I say I saw a beautiful picture of what is to come. And this is not unusual kasi ano ba yung book of Isaiah? It's a prophetic book. But here specifically, in the first few chapters of Isaiah, we see a beautiful picture, a great vision of what God has in store for the future. Now, ito, I don't know if you've read Isaiah before, pero or if you've read it again during this series, pero if you read the book of Isaiah, mapapansin mo na generally, generally, yung book of Isaiah, especially in the first few chapters, it gives us a, a bleak picture of the sinfulness of people. Diba? Puro judgment against God's people because of their failure, their, their rebellion, rebellion against God. But if you're a serious reader of Isaiah, I don't know if you'll notice na there will be times in that first few chapters of Isaiah na parang, Uy, parang this seems like something positive. Ni naman pala siya puro judgment, puro about the sinfulness of man. So in the passage of scripture that we read, it's something positive. Did, did you notice that when I was reading the word? It's a beautiful picture of the future. Um, when, when I was studying for this series, ito, ah, just like what I told you, um, personally rin sa akin yung Isaiah, that's one of the hard books in the Bible when I'm doing devotion. Parang, uh, ano, I need more context and background. Pero when I was studying the series in preparation for this, la- Salt and Light, siya ito, uh, what helped me, uh, what helped me in my reading of the book of Isaiah is this, and I hope it will help you as well. Uh. Maybe you, you will take note of this. Kasi, again, ang hope natin, babalikan natin Isaiah, tapos we will do devotions and quiet times with it. In the first few chapters, mga, uh, Isaiah 1 to Isaiah 5, there will be times the book of Isaiah goes back and forth from judgment and hope. Okay, those two words. Judgment and hope. If you read Isaiah chapter 1 to 5, parang it will go back and forth from a theme of judgment to a theme of hope. Judgment, hope, judgment, hope. Etong Isaiah 2, 1 to 5. Obviously, what is this? Is this hope or judgment? Question. 
Hope or judgment? Clearly, it's hope, di ba? Tapos, verse 6 onwards, ito yung, ito yung preaching natin next week. It's judgment again. Talking about the fallenness of God's people. So, ayan, if uh, may, may papakita ko sa keynote, ayan, if you look at, kanyari, the entire chapter 2, yung first five verses, it's about hope, tapos six onwards, judgment siya. And why am I saying this? Again, to help us read the book of Isaiah. It helped me big time. I hope it will help you as well. Okay? Some, scri- some sacred scripture and literature kasi are not meant to be read the way we read our books today. Isaiah is an anthology of sermons, a compilation of God's prophetic word to his people. So in the first few chapters, knowing na ito pala yung structure niya, na it will go from judgment to hope, I think mas makakalibrate tayo in terms of reading it. And why is this important? This is important kasi this communicates to us, ito, one of the things this communicates to us, this is not just a Bible study lesson, pero it teaches us something na even in the midst of God's judgment, God's pronouncements of His judgment on His people for not being faithful to the covenant, He still gives and inspires hope to His people and His readers. Yun yung sinasabi nito. Sobrang, from last week, sobrang rebellious ng, ng ano, anak ni Lord. Sobrang disobedient. They broke the covenant. Last week, sinabi ko, kung ako lang sigat, grabe. Ano na to? Judgment na talaga to. Wala na pag-asa to mga to. Pero, here, we see that there's still hope in the midst of that judgment. Ang galing na God, no? How many of you believe that God is so good? And that's what we see here. That's why our God is like no other. God gives us hope in the midst of judgment. And I believe, you know, that that thought applies to us even up until today in our time and age. What's happening to our world right now? Who can, who can really say? Why are all of these things happening to us? It can be the consequences of our sin. It can be us being judged as a people, the human race for that. Or on a lighter note, maybe it's just a way of God's disciplining the peoples of the world. Who knows, diba? But one thing is for sure, despite what is happening currently in the world today, with our God, with everything that He has said and promised in His Word, one, one thing is for sure, that we can always have hope, no matter how dire or bleak the situation may be. Galing ng of Isaiah, no? This is what, one of the things we can learn and still apply up until today. Because God is the everlasting God. He doesn't change. And even though there will be times we will feel God will be judging His people, we will feel the consequences of our sins, we will be disciplined, there can still be hope in that. Amen? Amen. Because that's the nature of our God. He's the judge of all the earth. He's a God of justice. Siyempre, hindi mawawala sa nature ni God yan. He's a just God. But He is also, at the same time, huwag natin kakalimutan, kahit feeling natin hopeless na yung situation, He's a loving, good, kind, and compassionate God. Hope bringer and hope restorer. Okay? So Isaiah 2. Isaiah 2. Isaiah 2, 1 to 5. This is a hopeful message to God's people back then in spite of the coming judgment that will befall them. Isaiah 2, 1 to 5. This gives us, again, a beautiful picture Ito yung, ito, ito yung kinukumulate ito. In fact, I have a summary statement for what is shown to us here in verses 1 to 5. Ready for this? Isaiah 2, 1 to 5 gives us a beautiful picture of the mountain of the house of the Lord being established as the highest of the mountains. Nations will flow to it, learning of God's ways, walking in His path, and experiencing everlasting peace. Yan yung summary nitong verses 1 to 5 ng Isaiah chapter 2. I believe this is a summary text of what we read today. The, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the highest of the mountains. Nations will flow to it, learning of God's ways, walking in His path, and experiencing everlasting peace. This is a beautiful picture of the kind of future that God has in store for the whole world. Especially as he was communicating this to his people. 
For many of us, we may not be familiar with this prophetic word, but I think, uh, I think, and I believe, itong Isaiah 2, 1 to 5 na ito, I think this is something that is very significant, especially um, to God's people back then, in terms of inspiring hope in them. Why, why did I say that? One of my reasons is this. Ito, uh, if you're still here, you're still listening, hopefully may natutunan tayo. Isaiah 2, 1 to 5, uh, 2, 1 to 4 lang actually, um, is the same prophetic vision that Isaiah's contemporary, Micah, wrote in his letter in Micah 4, 1 to 3. Same, word per word. Now, of course, yung scholarly debate about this, who wrote it, Isaiah ba, Micah ba, original. But the point here is this. When I, was, when I learned this, I realized for something like that to be repeated in another text, in another, another scripture, it must mean that it is significant and important. Parang sa, ano, parang sa Gospels. Did you know that parables which are seen in at least two to three of the Gospels may certain significance siya, kaya siya inuulit. Like feeding of the 5,000, that was repeated in all of the Gospels. It's because it has a tremendous significance to the people back then. So here, itong prophetic picture na ito, it is also repeated in Micah 4, 1, 2, 3. And this is significant. This is important. The mountain, again, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the highest of the mountains. Nations will flow to it, learning of God's ways, walking in His path, and experiencing everlasting peace. Now, if this is so important to the people back then, what does this mean? Okay, how was it relevant to the people back then, and why is it relevant to us today? Yeah. Okay, so kasi nakita mo na yung picture, di ba? Okay, so pastor, ano relevance ito sa life ko? Yun naman yung question lagi, di ba? Pag sa preaching. First, again, it's because of this. This is important because it tells us how, how faithful God is to His people. Yan yung theme natin for this series. And we cannot overemphasize that. This tells us that God is so faithful to His people. It shows us that there will always be hope in the midst of judgment. There's always hope even if people are stubborn and rebellious. Have you ever met a person who constantly you know, believed in people or always said hopeful things to someone? Or maybe to you, if you're watching this message, maybe sa inyo, EJ or uh, Leovic, may mga, may mga na-meet ba kayong ganun tao? Yung grabe lang talaga mag-inspire ng hope tsaka courage sa inyo. Kahit, alam mo, feeling nyo sobrang tigas ng ulo. I'm not saying matigas ulo nyo, pero minsan feeling natin ganun tayo, diba? diba? Tagas-tagas ng ulo ko, pero kahit gaano katigas yung ulo natin, grabe pa rin, grabe pa rin mag-inspire ng hope tsaka magbigay ng courage ng mga gantong tao sa boy natin. These people who constantly believes in us, right? They're one of a kind people. So for most of us, that's our parents or, uh, or the, specifically the parents, kita mo yung mga parents tapos may mga disobedient child sila, pero kahit gaano ka-stubborn yung mga children, grabe pa rin yung ano, hindi sila nawawala na pag-aasa nila. I recently talked to someone and this person is a mother. Uh, she said very quickly na even though her child is not yet a believer, not yet a Christian, sino sa mga, mga parents tapos you have ano, children who are not yet Christian? Sabi nitong person that I know, that she's not losing hope and she's always fervent in her prayers and she believes that one day, her son will get to know and love the Lord. Amen? Sino sa inyo, you're believing for someone to get to know the Lord, right? So, that's a, that's a picture. Persistent love and belief in a person. Those people are one of a kind. And here, I think God shows us a picture of that. He communicates this to His people. This is what's, this is what's going to be one day. I'm going to be faithful to my covenant. Even though this is the kind of people you are today, we'll see more of that next week. Even though this is the kind of people you are today, I'm not going to give up on you. And you know that there will always be hope for you, right? Again, just like what I said last week, kung ako lang si God, puro judgment lang tong word na to. Pero hindi eh. Hope in the midst of judgment. That's, that's the kind of God that we have. Galing ni God, no? How many of you believe God is so good? Amen? Could have been just words of judgment and condemnation. But amidst all of this, he still wanted to communicate hope that he's going to fulfill his covenant with them. Okay, so next. Okay, Pastor, this communicates hope. But what is so hopeful in this text? 
what does this prophetic picture in Isaiah mean? Let's read verse 2. Verse 2 says this, It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Um, in the ancient world, the mountains are a place where the gods dwelled. Yun yung symbolic picture ng mountains. Because diba, it's so high and it's so exalted, people think that that is the place where gods reside. Pero ang sinasabi ni Isaiah dito, okay, he's just using this imagery to say okay, that out of all the religions in the world, out of all the nations who believe in different gods and goddesses, out of all the belief systems in the world and the mindsets that people have, God is supreme amongst all of them. And He is the highest of all these mountains. Yung sinasabi nito, He is exalted, He is lifted up, and He is supreme above all these other mountains. He's the true God. He's a God and there is no other. And there's no one like Him. All other gods that all other religions have established are, are, are made and created by human hands. But for Israel, for God's people, God is the one who made the heavens and the earth. And I think ano eh, um, this is still true and relevant for us today. That God is the highest of all the mountains. His mountain is going to be established as the highest of the mountains. Especially with what's going on in the world today. Because eh, many people in the world today, including us, let for sure. We have so many questions, tama ba? so many questions about what's going on. And even though we live in a modern or postmodern world, di mo matatanggal sa mga tao yung pagiging inquisitive eh, and trying to make sense of what's going on in the world 2021 na, 2020 to 2021. Why are, is all of these things happening? Right? Why does all of these things came about? Maybe for many people in the world today, they will go to a certain belief or a certain religion or whatever to try to make things, sense of things. And and dami dami diba? And dami dami different options out there. Many people are still religious up, up until today. But I say it's telling us that God's mountain will be the highest of all the mountains. Our God alone is the one true supreme God. Only God can make sense of everything that's happening in the world today. Now, some people may say, madami na namang hindi religious nowadays. But still, the mountain that they go to is the mountain of science. Ito na daw yung best explanation eh, of everything that's happening in the world today. This is really now the highest of the mountains. Many people think like that today. Do you know that? Science now explains everything. Okay? Now, don't, get, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not angry against science. I'm not against science. Kasi I'm, I'm a mathematician by heart. I love science. Pero... In the world today, there seems to be this, this trend na parang, de, science na talaga yan. Science is the highest of all the mountains. And science can explain everything. Pero did you know this? Even science itself has so many, still so many unanswered questions today. Where we came from, where we're going, theories. And there are still a lot of assumptions as well to that. Yet still people say, na, de, science na talaga ngayon. Eh. Science can explain everything. There's still so many assumptions. There's still so many unanswered questions, even in science. But the Word of God says the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the highest. Doesn't mean that He is not already, but I believe what Isaiah is saying is this, that people one day indeed will know and understand and believe and see that indeed God's mountain is the highest of all the mountains. Again, nothing against science. I believe science ought to complement Christianity, and faith. But at the end of the day, it's really God who is exalted and lifted up. We want to try to make sense of what's happening in the world. Really, it's God who knows. Only God has the answers to those questions. But does that mean He will answer that? Maybe? Maybe not? But we can trust. We can trust that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains. There's no God like Him and there is no other. I think this is still relevant up until today. Naniniwala ba kayo relevant pa rin to? Right? In this postmodern, modern world, this, this is a good reminder for us. The exaltation, the supremacy of God above everything. Next, ano pa si sabi ng text? 
the text says this. Ito, related to um, yung mga napanood natin videos kanina. Sabi dyan, And all the nations shall flow to it, to the, to the mountain of the house of the Lord. All the nations shall flow to it. So here we get another prophetic picture of God's promised plan of salvation to the nation. This is God's promised plan of salvation to the nations. Uh, again, going back, going back to God's covenant. God's covenant promise with Abraham. Sabi niya, sabi ni God ki Abraham sa Genesis. Genesis 20 to 18. This is what he said. Sabi niya, And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So when God spoke his covenant to Abraham, God already had the nations of the earth in mind. Genesis pa lang. He already had the nations of the earth in mind. What does that mean? What does that mean? I and mean, why is it important? Um, again, diba? if you remember in the Garden of Eden, in Genesis uh, 2, we saw the fall of mankind. And all the nations of the world traces their ancestry to this one person, Adam. And sabi sa Genesis, sabi sa Genesis 6, 6, 5, Then the Lord saw the wickedness of mankind was great on the earth, and that every intent and of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. Ganto ka fallen yung nature natin. Ganto tayo ka depraved. Grabe lang yung evilness, no? Tsaka fallen nature natin. We, we saw a lot about that last week already. Pero ito, lest we think na when we read God's word, ah, si Israel lang naman favorite ni God. Eh. Siya lang naman yung chosen people ni God. Na lest we think that God only wants to save His chosen people. That's false and wrong. May purpose lang si God for His chosen people. Pero ultimately, ultimately, God's not playing favorites here. Ultimately, He still has in His mind the nations of the world. Genesis pa lang, the nations pa rin yung iniisip ni God. Amen? Lahat, the New Testament tells us that the Gentiles are, are also heirs to His promise. So here's my point. God's heart has always been for the nations of the world. And in Isaiah, this is just a reminder of that. The covenant promise with Abraham isn't just for Abraham and his people, but it's for all the nations of the world. So Isaiah says here that there will come a time, there will come a time when God's mountain, again, ano ulit yung summary natin, God's mountain will be established as the highest of the mountains, tapos, and all the nations of the world will flow to it. Grab it's a beautiful picture. Nations yung pinag natin dito. When I was reading this passage of scripture, you know, this seems to me like a reversal. A reversal will take place of how the whole world has turned away from God. Kasi, di ba sa Genesis, the fall of mankind, every single human being, only evil, was in the intent of their hearts, right? And um, the nations were flowing away from God. Palayo sila kay God. I think yun yung ano, nakakommunicate na picture dito. Pero I, I believe that there will be a divine reversal. Now, the whole world will go back and return to God. Pag, pag sinabi mo kasi, ano, um, flow or stream, diba sabi dun, the nations will flow to the mountain of the house of the Lord. A picture of, uh, ito, a picture of a river comes to mind when this was being spoken by Isaiah. Generally, diba, a river or a stream flows out from a mountain, not into it, Right? Unless you think, nagmamarunong lang tong pastor na to. Nag, nag-consult pa ako ng isang geologist. Hello, Aldona, if you're watching. Pero here, ito, di ba, rivers, di ba? Body of water, yan yung ano, image dyan. Palabas sila. It flows out from the mountain towards the sea. Pero sa Isaiah, ano kasulat? All the nations will flow to the mountain of the house of the Lord. A reversal of the fall of humankind. Now there will be a natural pull as the nations go to God and they're drawn to Him. Question. Talking about the fall, talking about mankind's sinfulness, how can this be possible left on our own? How can a river flow towards the mountain instead of out towards a mountain? Left on our own fallen sinful condition, can we, can we return to God left on our own? So that only means this, that God will be the one to make a way especially as He established His new covenant with us. Remember the new covenant? Talked about this last week. But in Isaiah 2.3, we mentioned Isaiah to what will happen. 
Isaiah 2.3, let me read that for you. And many peoples shall come and say, come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Sila na mismo, come, let's go to the mountain of the Lord. How can that be possible? Kung sarili natin, sinful and depraved, right? To the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. From a people who are disobedient and rebellious against God's laws, we see a promise and a prophetic picture of people going to the mountain of the Lord themselves. Sila mismo, yung gonna, yung, sila na mismo yung kay God, gonna ask Him, Lord, teach us your ways so that we may walk in your path. How many of you want that, right? Again, how is it possible when we are sinful and fallen? Only by God's grace. And in the new covenant, I believe, ano eh, um, Rene emphasized ni God ito. Itong sinabi niya sa Isaiah 2. Kita rin natin to in God's promise in the new covenant as fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 31, 33 says this, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Fulfilled in our Lord Jesus Christ. The covenant promise of God comes to pass. As the nations of the earth will be blessed because of God's covenant with Abraham. But again, that's not all. We see a desire of the people to learn God's ways so that they may walk in His path. All people from all walks of life, from every nation, and it's the name of our church, walking with God. From the fall in Genesis 3, we see God's covenant being fulfilled, all the nations of the earth walking with God. Now, question is this. When will this happen? Or ito, specifically, ito yung pag phrase ko sa question eh. Uh, purposeful yan. When will this come to pass? Or when did this come to pass? Bakit ganyan yung pag- pagkatanong ko? Kasi this is a prophetic picture. So nangyari na ba to? Or hihintayin pa ba natin mangyari to? This is a prophetic picture. Hope, pero nonetheless a prophetic picture. So natural question is, kailan mangyari yan? Or did it happen already? What does this mean? Now very quickly, generally there's two interpretations of this text. I say it 2, 1 to 5. There's two interpretations of what this means. First is this. Number one, uh, this thou, according to scholars, refer to the, to the millennium. Okay? The millennium. Christ's 1,000 year reign. Talk about eschatological times. Sabi nila, many scholars says, ah, so that's gonna happen in the millennium. Christ's 1,000 year reign. Okay? You can see that more in Revelation. The other view, very quickly lang to, I'm not going to focus on this, is that this already happened. After Christ came here, here in this world, kasi, eh, sabi sa text, di ba, in the latter days, or in the last days, they say that that generally refers to the messianic age. Di ba, last days, if you know this, it was mentioned in the prophecy of Joel, di ba, that we saw fulfilled in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, we see people from many different nations, the Gentiles, walking in God's ways, diba? Book of Acts palang. And Christianity started to spread like wildfire to the nations. Those are the two general views. And I think both have their merits. And it's a, an, an, a progressive unfolding of this prophetic picture where we see it's ultimately going to be fulfilled in the millennium, right? I'm assuming you're not an amillennialist, uh, millennialist, okay? Anyway, kasi in verse 4 naman in Isaiah, sabi the nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So sa 4, sabi dun, there's going to be no more war. There's going to be peace. Pero may wars pa rin ngayon eh, tama ba? Kaya, kaya yun yung two sides of the camp. Ano ba talaga to? In the future, future pa? Or did this happen already? But whatever side we're in, okay, whatever camp we may fall in, ultimately, what's important is we know this truth uh, that will happen. And it's said here in Isaiah. Here's the point. One thing, one thing is for sure in both. The nations of the world will stream to the mountain of the Lord. 
the nations of the world will stream to the mountain of the Lord. God's covenant promise with Abraham has, is coming, or will come to pass. But the point is, all the nations of the earth will stream to the mountain of the Lord. When he said, all the nations of the world will be blessed through his covenant with Abraham, it certainly did happen. It's happened. Will happen. The Gentiles are part and partakers of the promise. Heirs with Abraham as well. Ang galing lang. Ang galing lang ito. The point, and again, masyado nang, ano, naging intellectual, pero the point here, ano yung relevance ito sa atin? Going back to our theme for this series, God's faithfulness to His covenant. Because what we see in God's word is the fulfillment of a covenant that has spanned for a 1,500 year span. Then we picture ako dyan eh. Biblical history. 1,500 year or more span. Depends on what scholars would say. From Genesis to the New Testament. Come on. Let's give God praise for that. You know, you know when I was thinking of this, na imagine mo ba yun? Can any, ito ah, ako lang, left on my own. Can anyone in this world truly make a promise that spans for more than a century? Make a promise nga lang for one to two years. Ang hirap na i-fulfill nun, ba? Pero here we see the fulfillment of God's covenant span, spanning millennia. And it did happen. It shows God's faithfulness to His plan. That's amazing and that's huge. So again, whatever camp you may fall into right now, whatever camp, for sure this will happen. Because God has been faithful to all of His promises and His covenant. Grabe track record po niya. The good news is this. Ito, um, we see this happening up until today. Nakita na rin naman natin ang nangyari siya, ba? Not just in the days of Acts, but we as a church take God's plan and God's heart seriously in reaching the nations of the world. Diba? Kaya nga, nakarinig tayo ng testimony and praise report kanina, diba? Tomorrow's last eh? Let's give God praise again for that. Only by the grace of God are the nations of the world coming towards Him. And the good news is this. We can be part of God's plan in advancing the nations. Amen, diba? Amen. Even in the midst of the pandemic and the global crisis, ito ah, let me tell you this. Hindi po, ano, hindi po tayo nag-stop in making disciples of all nations. Let's continue to pray for our missionaries, diba? Thank you, Ate Helen, for <laughs> exhorting us kanina sa Titan of, Tights and Offering. But let's continue to pray for them, with them. They're, they're the ones leading the charge in advancing the gospel to the nation. But that doesn't mean that we're not part. Kasi we are part of that. We co-labor together. May mga different roles lang tayo and responsibility. Pero, guys, ito, Isaiah 2, grabe, we see God's promise to Abraham still coming to pass, even up until today. And not just ito, not just in, not just in our church, Victory or Every Nation, but even all the churches in the world all the churches in the world fulfilling the Great Commission. This is a living testimony and proof of God trust being trustworthy and faithful to His covenant. Grabe, no? Grabe, no? Grabe, um, puro grabe na lang ako. Kasi yung, yung promises ni God sa Scripture, you still, ha- you still see it happening even up until today. Kaya we take the Great Commission seriously. Go and make disciples of all nations. We are partakers and co laborers of, of God in advancing His kingdom and extending His kingdom to the nations. We are seeing God's covenant being fulfilled in our very eyes, in our very midst today. And this is something real. This is not just some wishful thinking, but this is something that's really and truly happening. Now, as I close, knowing all this and having said this, that God is trustworthy in His plan of salvation to the nations, what should be our response? Okay? Is this one of those weekend na parang about the nations lang ba na preaching? No, we have a part to play here. What should be our response? And it's simple. It's this. Let me end with this. In verse 5, Isaiah 2 verse 5. Sabi dun, O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Verse 5. Verse 1 to 4 is that prophetic picture of the future that gives people hope. Pero Isaiah 2 to 5, this is the response to the people of God. To the house of Jacob. Back at house of Jacob. Back at house of Jacob. If you remember Jacob, ano yung, what does his name mean? Supplanter and deceiver. Pero, by God's grace, God was able to change him. Now, the house of Jacob, God's chosen people, rebellious, 
and going against him. Diba? We talked about that in detail last week. I believe, and many people believe this, kaya House of Jacob, is because it's a, it's a call to the people na, hey, you can still turn from your ways. You can still turn from your wicked ways. If God was gracious to Jacob, if he was able to change him, kahit ganun na yung pagka, pagka, ano sa kanya, pagka brand, yun ang identity na binigay sa kanya ng mga tao, God was still able to change him. And God's people, it's still possible for them to change their ways. This is a call, an issue for them to walk in the light of the Lord. An issue for them, an invitation for them to go back to God. Again, in the context of how stubborn and obstinate they are. In light of God's future plan of judging the nations, bringing and restoring the nations uh, in order, the mountain of the house of the Lord being established as the highest mountains, nations will flow to it. God restoring order in this world. In light of all of these things, the way, the right and proper way to live and the right and proper way to respond to all of those things is to accept God's invitation to walk in Him, in His light. Why wouldn't His people want to walk in God's ways? Yun ay tama eh. Yun ay yung ano eh. That's, God, God gave the covenant again kasi that's the right way to live. We know the curses and the consequences that will happen if we disobey His ways and do not walk in His path. Why will, not, why will we not trust in Him? Coming, accepting God's invitation to walk in the light of His is really the true, proper, and right response. And I believe, ato, I believe that this is still the, still the same invitation to us and all the people of the world today. Isaiah 2.5 O oh, house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And pansin nyo ba? Ang galing lang ng metaphor ng ginamit dito. It's an invitation to a relationship with God. Hindi siya parang Oh, house of Jacob, now do this, do that. Hindi. Walk. It's a relational term. Walking is a metaphor for a relationship with God. And walking in the true light of the Lord so that we will no longer be in darkness. If you're here today, you're watching this message online, I believe God's calling us to turn away from the darkness. Pero how can we turn away from the darkness left on our own? Only by walking in the light of the Lord can that darkness be dispelled out of our lives. Question, are we gonna, are we gonna accept God's invitation to walk in His light? This is not about earning our salvation. It's not about doing religion. But I believe it's a call to follow Him. To, to follow Jesus. It's a relational picture. If we just trust Him, then we will no longer walk in darkness. But only live in God's light. Amen? Amen. Let me just close um, with a word of prayer. Father, thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, for our time together. And maraming salamat, Lord, God, for allowing us to learn and study your scripture. Study the book of Isaiah. Grabe yung mga riches, Lord, God, yung treasure, Lord, God, in this, in this word. And I pray for all of us who listen to this message. Father, I pray um, if any one of us, Lord, God, um, we're able to hear that, Lord God. And I believe you're, you're issuing your people right now to turn away from darkness. Lord, 2020, 2021 has been a year of darkness for many of us, Lord God. But I, I know, Lord God, that the only way that, that the darkness will be dispelled in our lives, dispelled in our environment, Lord God, is for us to walk in your light, Lord God. Father, thank you for this beautiful, beautiful picture and vision of the future, Lord God, that the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the highest of the mountains, Lord God. And all the nations of the world will flow to it so that we may learn your ways, we may walk your path, Lord God. Father, I pray, God, that we will be a people who will no longer be obstinate, we'll, we will no longer be stubborn, we will no longer be rebellious, Lord God, but we will be a people, Lord God, who will just trust in you. Who will, who will accept your invitation to come and follow you, Lord God. Kasi yung darkness, Lord God, hindi namin kaya expel yung darkness left on our own. But we can only trust in you and walk in your light so that darkness will be expelled from us. Father, thank you, God, for your word. Bless all of us who are hearing, Lord God, the preaching of your word this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen and Amen.